Hi, I'm Chris Walsh. Follow me into the Infinite Thinking Machine number three, living in 3D. We live in the most amazing age where learning no longer has to happen in a vacuum. It can be seamlessly woven into the fabric of our everyday lives. You like that nice little metaphor? And leave it to the rocket scientists to lead the way. We all know that NASA has some great educational projects, but here's one of my favorites. Via the internet, kids can control a large radio telescope in Southern California and collect real-time data, like the atmospheric temperature on Jupiter. They learn how to read the data, graph it in a spreadsheet, and even turn it into three-dimensional models using high-tech tools, like Play-Doh and straws. The best part is that the students are actually conducting real research for NASA, and they could actually make new scientific discoveries. Maybe if I'd had this sort of real science in school, I'd be in space right now, or in deeper space. EVS, it stands for Enhanced Vector Shorelines, and one middle school teacher has a passion for creating and cataloging them with the help of his students. From what I can tell, he works with 20 to 30 students after school to teach them advanced techniques about digital topography, which relies on art, math, geography, and science skills. Then he enlists their help to accurately vectorize satellite images he gets from Google Earth. And they post all the final images to his blog for the rest of us to use. As a fellow geo geek, I have to give a massive gold star to Mr. Minton for taking on this very cool project and for allowing his passion to translate into amazing real world learning experiences. Lip syncing is nothing new, but being able to share your own music videos has really taken off thanks to YouTube, MySpace, and Google Video. Kids love this stuff, and you've got to find ways to tap into this craze in your own classroom. So drop your ideas in our comments section on the blog, and we'll share some of those best ideas in future episodes. Me? Lip sync? Don't even tempt me. Google SketchUp Idea 591. Design an eco-friendly passive solar cabin for a real rock star. That's what these Australian students did. So it got me thinking about my own eco-friendly dream house, and I asked my friend Aidan Chopra to help me envision what it could look like. All right, Aidan, now that I'm this big TV star because of ITM, <laughs> I, need, I, I need to have a cabin. That's what every big star has, right? It's a Absolutely. cabin in the woods. Oh, so yeah, sure. Can you help me mock this up and kind of get some ideas out on what my cabin would look like? Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's start maybe with a rectangle, because all good cabins start with a sure. rectangle. But I'm really, really quickly going to uh, pull that up into wow. maybe like a three-dimensional form like okay. this. That's pretty good. Let's, now, uh, I want high ceilings on mine. High Is that ceilings. Cool? So we better make this thing even higher. Yeah. We'll pull it up to about there. All okay. Right. What I'm going to do is just draw a little line here in the center, and then I'm going to go up and get the move tool and just pick that ridge line up to make a slanted roof. Now, yeah. is that steep enough, or should we go a little I steeper? I think a little higher, yeah. A little I mean, steeper. Because I'm going to want some windows at the right top there. for the light to come in. Okay. Should we, should we go ahead and do that now? Yeah. I, I mean, it? definitely I want a big window on okay. one side here, southern exposure kind of stuff. Cool. I'm going to grab a rectangle and set it in there. I'm just going to set another one maybe over here, too. So what I'm going to do is use this push-pull tool to maybe just push those in a little deeper. Oh, great. Like that. So those are more like skylights. Exactly. And then what I'm going to do is take the surface and just delete it. And then when we actually look at this thing in 3D, you'll see that we're looking down inside your building there. All right, cool. In fact, if we turn on the sun, you'll see that you can actually see the light there on the walls. OK. It's starting to look a little, little bit like my cabin here, but it's got nothing around it. What I'm going to do is pull up what we call components. They're a little pre-baked uh, SketchUp models that download when you download SketchUp. You can make your own and add them to the menu. You can go online and grab ones that other people have made if you want. And uh, we've got some stuff in SketchUp here. What I'm going to do is drag you in a, a little minivan. How's the minivan? Sure, yeah, for the kids. Yeah. Do a minivan, maybe a pickup truck in case you need to haul wood. Definitely. You don't want to mess up that minivan. Although I'm a famous star, you know, I'm going to have my people do that. So um, we can drag in some of the shrubbery and trees. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is in the mountains, so Absolutely. pine trees. and We'll grab a little tree, maybe nice throw one. a little tree in there. Here's a different kind of tree. Oops, that looks like a bush. That's a small tree. Actually, yep. Here's a tree wow, like that, Wow, that's too. a big tree. Yep. And so there's kind of no end of stuff that you can get. That's very this cool. This is just the sampler that comes with SketchUp when you download it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So clearly, I mean, SketchUp is an amazing tool um, for experimenting with different designs and things like that. And what sort of other things can you imagine people doing, or have you already seen kids doing with SketchUp? What they're doing is kids within a school will uh, 
build their school. And it's a great accessible project because there's obviously math concerned. There's things like architecture and proportion and stuff like that that they're learning about as they're going out and measuring their school and figuring out exactly how it works. They build a 3D model of their school and uh, then they start to create maps from that 3D model. It actually is applying to a real life situation. Exactly. It's a completely interactive and collaborative model that multiple kids are able to work on. Very cool. What else have you seen? When, you, when it comes to appealing to kids who maybe draw more or they think spatially more, kids who might be good at video games but not necessarily so good at writing, there are ways to create assignments using programs like SketchUp that um, allow them to create a, a product that is a product of their thinking and, and of taking information and, and creating knowledge out of it um, that isn't an essay. That's great. That's great. Well, thanks again for a great product. Um, and I look forward to seeing my dream house pretty soon. You're going to have the Absolutely. CAD drawings, the, the blueprints all printed out for me, right? So I can just kind of. Absolutely. Get we'll that. actually we'll build it for you. How's that? <laughs> for Google. That, that's right. You, thank exactly. you so much. Today, the surf's up on design. In the network world, Design has become something even richer because it's now possible to um, use the network to pull information from a variety of different sources in order to compose a design. And that design work may actually be done by groups of people interacting with each other, analyzing the various aspects of the design and how it solves the problem or the design and how it expresses an idea. So in this networked world, we've got computing tools that actually help us do design. You hear about computer-aided design or, or uh, CAD or CAD. That is becoming a very, very natural way in which to perform design. Now we have the ability to do computations to help us figure out whether our designs actually solve the problem that we're trying to work on. Over time, as we get more and more powerful computers, and more information on the network that's available in computer manipulable form, we may have computers becoming partners with us, not just fancy pencils, but actually devices that help us think through the solution to a problem, maybe look at variations and uh, alternatives, or look at extreme conditions that we can subject our design to to see whether or not it actually holds up. Okay, time to take the ideas from our little 2D show into the big bad 3D world. But before we go, here's your homework assignment for the week. Ready, set, go. What's this? And where is it? Hint. Okay, no hints. Find it, then discuss it by posting your answers and thoughts to the show comments in the ITM blog, www.infinitethinking.org. I'm Chris Walsh for the ITM. Keep thinking. No, I'm not giving them any hints. This is the Infinite Thinking Machine. I am the Infinite Thinking Machine.